Welcome back, SOLIDWORKS 2025. Let's go to create a part from scratch. Let's click as shown on the previous videos for this series of basic modeling. We first select a plane, then we create um, geometries in our environment of sketches and at the end we create uh, a volume from uh, different operations. The first thing that I recommend is uh, to get your model fully defined. So how do we do that is by adding dimensions and adding, adding relations in between uh, the different types of geometries. So we saw how uh, this thing can happen just by uh, clicking two elements while uh, holding the control key on your keyboard and releasing the mouse, uh, sorry, releasing the control key and then you have options in here. So I will be adding some dimensions to this so we can extrude a geometry that is under a special condition. That is when our model has many or several, uh, let's say, uh, areas. So let's see, oh yeah, here. So one method is by uh, adding dimensions from the region. So you can take that in count because that's going to save many, many, many time by having troubles. Okay, so I got out of the um, sketch command and right now what I'm going to do is to hit my S uh, key on the keyboard. And this is going to show me some of the comments that um, are going to be available during the environment. And remember, this is going to be always customized so you can add your own comments as you uh, work and also, this is I would say this is driven by uh, your uh, methodology for working as well as uh, the type of project that you work on. Okay, so this is calling the extrude boss base command that is also access accessible at the features tab at the left. But uh, in this case, it is a little bit different because since our sketch is having different areas, the software requires us to tell which areas we want to have extruded. In my case, I will need to select all them. I will just click and drag the arrow in here and I will get a 40 millimeter dimension for the height of this extrusion. So I will click on okay. Now we have our model. Remember the rules that are going to make you more successful in the 3D modeling process is having the right order on your parametric model. On the model tree, you should have clear order of operations. So let's first add material, then remove the required material, then at the end add chamfers and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So I will add a hole in here, but it is a special one. So I will go into the um, socket head. Let's see, yeah, hex socket head. So you have a library of different types of screws based on the standards. And the standards defines uh, the type of, uh, oh, sorry, the dimensions for the different uh, types of screws. If you need a fit that is close, normal, or loose, let's leave it normal. And let's say that the deep, the depth of the hole is going to be uh, along all the entire uh, part. So it's a true hole, um, hole. So having all that uh, selected, now what we need to do is to select the plane where we want to locate our hole. So by clicking here on position, 
we have many options like is reuse an existing sketch, use 3D sketch environment that that could be a little bit tricky or just go straight to select the face that you want to use. So I will click in here and I will position along this arc. And as you can see, I have a center indicator here that I at where I can go and click and that hole is going to be constrained to that to to that center. I could also click another uh, part of the of the face, and um, I will have to add relations for keep it uh, fully defined the position of the hole. For now, I will leave it like that. I will click here at the check. Now you can see that I have a hole. That's great. Let's now add a very quick operation in here. So when you want to create a, a feature in one face, what you need to do is to click the face with left click and then use this icon in here that says a sketch. If you use this other one, it says edit the sketch. It is going to edit the sketch of that feature. So let's say uh, that we are going to create here a pocket. So I will use a rectangle that is a center rectangle because I will like to have this center to the height of this um, extrusion. So what I do is to position my mouse close to the center. I will have this icon and uh, also this dot. So I will click on the control key and keep it on hold. I click once in here and then click the center of the rectangle and release the control. There I have the option for make it horizontal. And by doing that, I do not need to do any other thing or math or uh, dimension to keep it right center in here. If I increase the dimension of the extrusion, it is going to always be related with center of the extrusion. Okay, so let's do the same with this other one. So my pocket is always going to be centered in there and it will have dimension of 12 at this side and it is going to have a dimension of eight at this order. So how do we place dimensions in between elements? So let me delete this one and call again the dimension uh, tool for our smart dimension. So I will click once with left click the element that I would like to, uh, uh, to provide the dimension. As you can see, it is already saying, okay, we have this dimension, but if you don't click uh, at the graphics area, if you go and click another element, it is going to give you another type of dimension. So there you go. There we have our uh, dimension for this difference. And then what I did, well, for you need to not only click on the element, you need to also click on the graphics area once more, left click, and it is going to leave the dimension static. But you are going to have this other dialog box at where you can type the dimension and uh, of course, modify it. Okay, so I will exit from here. I will create an extrusion, but uh, extrude cut, sorry, actually. <laughs> and I will make it with a depth of nine millimeters. I will just click here and then I have my pocket. I will like to have this bucket uh, exactly the same dimensions and everything here at the left. So instead of going and create a new sketch and creating a bucket, uh, doing the rectangle, doing the extrusion, I can take a shortcut and use the mirror tool. So with mirror, what I need to do first is to select uh, the plane or the face that is going to be the reference for the symmetrical condition. So mirror is referring to symmetric, okay? If we need to select the center in here, but we do not have 
uh, a face or geometry that uh, we can use as a reference, we can use the origin planes. So as you can see, the top plane is going to be perfect for this. But this is only because I started creating my model at the center of the origin at that point when I created the first rectangle. So that's key. Always when model, think about the symmetry. If you're going to have a symmetry condition, what is the most convenient way how to start the geometry at your uh, model origin? Okay, so I will jump into select here features to mirror. And of course, we are talking about this extruded cut and you can select that it from the model tree that is appearing in here, or you can go and select one of the faces. Exactly the same thing. So you can see a preview in there. It looks good, perfect. Let's check, check the green um, check. Okay, so let's say that for now, this is the part that we want, but this part requires a little bit of uh, Fillets because, for example, if it is done uh, with the CNC machine, all the end meals leave a radio, radius on the corners, at least the ones that are internal corners. So let's add here some fillets, but that's always going to happen, or I suggest to make it at the end of the model. So let's click here at fillets and uh, click this other one in here and there you go. We have here the option for create the fillets automatically uh, when the model is clear enough for selecting those and go fast. Sometimes it is not convenient, convenient enough, but sometimes it is. So if I just want to be concentrated on the pocket area, uh, I will have to select just uh, the first option. This gives me uh, two clicks that saved in time. I will click again in here. And the first option is also going to give me the option. Okay, great. So let's leave those as 10 millimeter radius. Let's now go with this one. So, and well, let me show you, sorry. Instead of going to the fillets command here at the top, I'm selecting the edge or intersection in between the geometries at where I can place a fillet. And I'm uh, then after the click, I'm having the options that can be used by using that selection. So of course we are going to have the fillet and the chamfer command available. So by clicking here, uh, let me click this other one. And well, using the same method, I'm clicking very quickly, many of them in just one single click. And uh, now let's add the chamfer. So this can look awesome. It's a chamfer of two millimeters, looks good. And there you have it. Okay, so this is a very basic and quick 3D modeling and the best Part of this, remember, is that you can parameterize all this and then you can play around with the logic that you want to have for your model. Do you remember I mentioned this pocket was always going to be center? Well, I can just click in this face or any other face except the ones that are part of a chamfer or a pocket. If, you, if I select these ones that are part of the extrusion, I will have the dimensions available and I can just click one click, one left click on the dimension and you can type the dimension that you need. So as you can see, the model has been updated automatically and keeping the consistency that I was requiring for the 3D modeling. If this video looks good to you. I recommend you this other video that is going to go more deep in this beautiful software.